Nick, have you ever dreamt of a moment like that? They say you, they uh, say you do. Yeah, I think every footballer, every kid um, does in their backyard, uh, kicking the goal after the siren, but um, yeah, it was a scary, scary moment. How did you feel when you went back to take that kick? Um, as I said, yeah, pretty, um, oh, not, not frightened, but um, pretty nervous at the same time. Um, I think taking the kick wasn't too bad, but um, once that siren went, um, I had to go back and adjust again, but the boys were um, pretty vocal and letting me know just to Set on my nerves, but uh, um, it felt like the whole kangaroo team was um, on the mark at that stage and, and throwing a bit of dirt at me. So um, no, it was a good, good finish. Were you confident you'd put it through? Yeah, I was pretty confident. Um, our kicking coach, uh, Longy, um, you know, did the same thing. And, um, he calls it his pocket and um, the celebration as well. So I owe him a bit of, um, a bit of money, I think, because he's, he's copyrighted that. So um, no, I was pretty confident um, in kicking the goal. The celebration, did you plan that? Did you think about that ahead of time? Or? Nah, I was more worried about kicking the goal. So um, nah, whatever happened after that was um, I apologise for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just the spur of the moment. Um, emotions take over from there, I guess. I think a few of your um, teammates last night said they were glad the ball was in your hands because they reckoned you don't feel pressure. You, oh, I, think they're I think they're lying to you. Everyone feels a bit of pressure. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, you um, you know, you, you spend all day at training, you know, doing stuff like that, kicking goals, and um, you know, especially playing up forward um, half the game. So um, I guess in any forward hand, you'd be pretty confident. And you grew up kicking the ball around on that street with Walters and, and Yaron. Was that the other one? Um, did you used to practice this kind of thing, or imagine oh, kicking a goal? To like be that? honest, um, no. Nah, those boys, we love to just snap it from the boundary. I, I missed one about a couple of minutes earlier from from that pocket, which. They'd be disappointed in because uh, you know he spent a lot of time doing that. But um, yeah, I guess I was just pretty lucky to be in the right position um, you know, in, the, in those final seconds. Just as the can you talk us through as the ball came in, you appeared to be caught fairly deep in a pretty big pack. Did you ever think you're out of position, or did you and you were struggling to get there, or did you always feel like it was yours? Um, yeah, there was a pretty big pack. I think I was a few deep, but um, I, to be honest, I haven't really seen any vision of it or anything. So I um, yeah I don't know how far back I was, but. Um, the runner came out pretty pretty late in the game and told us there wasn't much time. So um, I felt, you know, if I was a chance to, to go for the mark, um, to fly for it, um, I was going to do it. So yeah, just back myself in. And, and all the way through in junior footy, uh, have you ever had a kick after the siren like that in any game ever? No, nah, I had one close to the siren, but no, nah, never after the siren. And um, I don't feel level. It's a it's a lot bigger and um, a lot more nerve wracking as well. People say you don't seem to feel the pressure at all. Um, is it just that you're great at, at, at absorbing it, or what's your secret? Um, yeah, there again, I think everyone feels pressure, um, just at different, um, I don't know, different uh, amounts. Um, yeah, but to be honest, I'm not going to say I didn't feel any pressure, but um, you know, I just think you just have to back yourself in and be confident in what you do. At the end of the day, it is your job, and um, you have to go out there and do it. Are you keen to watch the vision today, the replay of it? Yeah, um, I don't like to watch too much, you know. I, um, I'll have a look at it and then see what happened. Um, I'm sure I'll go home and the family will be watching it over and over. But um, now nah, for me, once is enough and, um, and just moving on to next week. And how does it feel this morning knowing that your name's going to be on the lips of everyone, you know, buying a coffee, going for their morning breakfast? <laughs> uh, I think it's the case anyway most times, um, <laughs> especially here in Perth. But um, no, nah, it's good. Um, I'm just glad that we got the win, especially for um, guys like Darren Glass. You know, he's led the way um, for us, especially since I've been at the club and, um, you know, been a great leader. And to, to honour him that way, um, you know, there's no better way. And, um, yeah, I just thank him for, for being out there for us as well. Yeah. And what are your plans today? Getting that in that freezing water, um, that's my first plan, and, and to recover from that, so hopefully I don't get sick and um, be ready to go to Sydney. Nick, you're obviously um, pretty emotional and dedicated the goal to someone who, who passed away. You're able to expand it all on? Yeah, just a, um, just a family friend. Um, uh, my girlfriend's um, little cousin um, passed away, and um, you know, being a, being a young little baby, it's, it's pretty sad, and um, you know, the funeral was yesterday, and. Yeah, I guess it was, I was pretty high on emotion and, and, and dedicated that game and um, that finished it to them and the family, you know, because, um, you know, they've been struggling a little bit and, um, you know, I, I guess, as I said, emotions take over at the end and um, it just puts everything into perspective as well. Um, you know, there's people doing it tougher out there and, um, you know, we're pretty fortunate to be doing what we do every day. And was that in Perth? Did you go to a funeral before the game? It was in Perth. Um, went to the Mass the night before. Didn't go to the funeral during the game uh, because it was on around the same time as the game, but, um, no, um, I'm sure they were watching on and I'm um, pretty proud as well. Can you tell us anything about the circumstances of what happened to the bub? No, oh, not really. It was a, you know, a newborn and um, yeah, it just w wasn't well. But um, oh, that's for the family um, to, to deal with. It's not really anyone else's business here. Yeah.
How's Push the body around. feeling and the groin feeling, Nick, in general? Yeah, groin's going all right. Um, you know, still, still managing my uh, workload and, uh, and getting back into it. So, um, same again last night. I, I didn't play as many minutes as I, as I normally do. Um, but in saying that, a few guys did go down with injury, so I um, had to stay out there a little bit longer, which, which did test me a bit. But um, yeah, fitness is still slowly building and um, yeah, getting there slowly, yeah. You seem to play more time in the ruck last night than probably you have in the, pre the previous game. Is that part of the plan? Yeah, that's part of the plan. You know, the last probably two weeks, um, you know, I've been building up to that. And um, yeah, Wish obviously set out uh, uh, a plan for me to play a bit more in the ruck just to get that, that ruck conditioning into myself. And, um, you know, Coxie's been pretty pretty nice to let me stay in there while he stays up forward. So um, I think he enjoys kicking goals as well. So. A couple of the injured boys, you haven't spoken to Sharrod or Will? Yeah, I just spoke to Sharrod just then. He's, he's hobbling around um, on his foot, I think, uh, which is injured. I'm not too sure um, to what extent he is injured, but um, yeah, he's um, still, you know, still pretty bubbly and, and, and he wants to play, um, you know, when he's right. Um, Will, pretty big effort by him to come back on the field last night after hurting his finger, but um, yeah, um, I'm not too sure who else, who else got injured, but it seemed like everyone was going down at one stage. Is Nick, it, people talk about eight-point ball games. You must think that's a massive win in the context of your season. Yeah, it is. Um, I think you know, for, for both teams, we're looking for the win. Um, you know, it was, it was pretty important, especially for, for, to make the finals. Um, and uh, yeah, to get a win like that um, against a team, you know, they're going to be a, a great team this year, and they're pushing for the top eight as well. So to get that win, um, I just builds that confidence. And, and you know, the last few weeks as well, it's built that confidence. Um, we, we had a bit of a slow start, but now we're um, you know we're developing, and um, you know we. We look forward to, to the next few rounds coming up. Is there a feeling that you were almost lucky to get away with that one, given the injuries and the kangaroos were really well yeah, in control? Yeah, they were, they were in control a fair bit of the game. Um, you know, we, we didn't play hard enough defensively in that first quarter as well. I think we allowed them 40 marks or so, and, um, you know, they were just tearing us to bits. So, um, yeah, it was, a, you know, it was a great, a great testament to the boys to come back and, and show a bit of heart, especially, for, as I said, for guys like Glassy, they're two, 250th, and, and Scott Selwood in his 100th. Um, you know, Wish kind of brought that up at half time and three quarter time, just to just to remind us what they've done for the team and you know the roles they've played and you know just to, just to put in a bit of work for them. So um, yeah, it was it was a it was a lucky getaway, I guess. There was a lot of debate last night about whether that free kick for Selwood was actually there. Did you see it unfold at all? To be honest, I didn't see it. I was more worried about it coming in. Um, yeah, I didn't I didn't see it, but. Um, Oh, with the Selwood boys, they're, they're always getting free kicks and um, you're never going to stop that. But um, oh, I just love the way. I think it's because they go so hard at the footy and um, you know a lot of guys do come into contact with, with their head or, the, or their necks. Nick, did you enjoy your tussle with Magic Gore at stages? Yeah, it was good. I know Magic, um, you know, through, through the multi uh, multicultural program we do with the AFL. So um, no, it's good for him to get out there, especially after him kicking six goals last week. And um, I guess the hype was built a little bit bigger. but. Um, didn't really play on him too much, had a little bit um, in the middle. I think he beat me in the first CVD, which, which I wasn't too happy with. Um, and the boys let me know after the game as well. But um, no, it was great to see him out there and um, you know, I wish him all the best for the rest of the year. What did um, the boys have to say to you about your goal after the game? Was that sort of nice, spending some time in the rooms and that sort of thing straight afterwards? Yeah, it was. Um, as I said earlier, there was about probably 30 litres of Powerade um, in that middle of the, of the change room after. But, um, I feel sorry for whoever has to clean that up, but uh, yeah, the boys were pretty excited and pumped, especially as I said for the for the guys' milestones as well. Um, it just made that little bit bigger as well. And did Glassy have a word of thanks? I don't think he's won too many milestones in his career. No, he hasn't. He actually did say thank you. I don't know why. I was thanking him um, for being out there, but um, yeah, he did. And Wush said last night he might have been handy back in the 05 Grand Final in that pack when Leo Barry. <laughs> Leo Barry. Took the mark. <laughs> <laughs> If you, were, if you were there? No, I don't think so. I think there was enough guys around there. Ashley Sampy, he was there. He could have taken the mark. So um, I'll no, leave it to those guys. Nick, Nick just the... well, one more story on the celebration. Just sharing that with the fans, that atmosphere. Can you tell us what it was like? Yeah, hey, it's good. You know, our fans come out there and, you know, we've got a pretty vocal crowd, especially at home. And um, I used to share it with them. And then, you know, after the game as well, I, um, it's not too often you see them stick around um, for, for such a long time after the game. And, be full of smiles. It was great. Um, I had a few friends as well that were sitting towards where I ran, so um, which was which was pretty good. And um, oh, I just enjoy just enjoyed the moment. Yeah. I think the trademark dreadlocks they don't get in the way. They're going to stay there long term. I think so. I don't know unless yeah unless they get sick of them. But yeah, last night they didn't get in the way, so I think I'll keep them for a little bit longer. Golf is still an issue for the side. Nick, um, you going to give the boys a masterclass this week? <laughs> I've had about 30 text messages saying that um, about guys giving the masterclass, but. 
To be honest, I'm not the greatest goal kicker. Um, yeah, guys like Mark Lecrae and Josh Kennedy, I still back them in, and um, you know they they know where they need to work on what they need to work on. Um, but um, yeah, I'm not too sure. We we do struggle a little bit um, with with those missed opportunities. It does hurt us later on in the game, and um, I'm sure we'll continue to work on that.